Anybody else fondly remember Moonbeam Entertainment? Well, let's look back at the wild, wonderful, and wacky filmography of Moonbeam Entertainment as part of my new series, Moonbeam Memories. Portland? I'm in the wrong state! But there is if you're going to tell a story that's been told a thousand times before, in my opinion, this is how you do it. With this one in particular, the uh, Jack vs. the Giant stuff, you know, there hasn't been really too many successful attempts, but with 1994's Beanstalk, we got a fully formed and wacky universe that gave us some fun characters, and definitely had franchise potential in the cryptozoologist hunter Doc Winston played flawlessly by Margot Kidder. Sometimes these old tales are done perfectly on film just once. I mean, you can make them the way they're supposed to be, and then make them the way they're really supposed to be afterwards, <laughs> if you know what I mean. In Beanstalk, though, we get a unique take on the tale, and here Jack is played by that one little shit from Mighty Ducks, and you know, a CB4 and assorted 90s fever dreams. And here, he is on full 90s radical kid mode, uh, recording all of his bright ideas on a talk boy. I mean, a, a tape recorder. Big idea number 957. Sugar frosted veggies. You know, for future use in hopes to dig him and his mom out of poverty. Or at the very least, he hopes to come up with a bright idea to save their house. Owned by the eviction notice crazy Richard Mole. Along the way, we get a supporting cast in a loser-ass store owner warning Jack to stay on the roads. And 90s sex symbol Patrick Renna shows up. And, um, you know, Renna actually plays against type here as he is the ginger bully asshole who loves Shakespeare, ironically. Or unironically, whatever. This was made at that sweet spot when Full Moon was still releasing through Paramount Pictures. And in turn started the fantasy adventure kids label Moonbeam Entertainment, taking a lot of elements learned from their horror trade and bringing them over to PG territories. And we get some legit classics here. And some forgotten classics too, in my opinion. And, um, you know, some other not-so-memorable romps. But here, in my opinion, Beanstalk is their biggest attempt at a more live-action adventure flick, really pushing their budget here and getting away with some cool stuff. Now, I mean, with all these movies, you know, things are choppy and there seems to be a lot of footage left on the cutting room floor and some stuff is just... What? I am going to pulverize you. <sighs> After I get some rest. What? But never are we bored. Margot Kidder is hilarious here. And all the performances are done in, you know, a bizarrely meta, kooky fashion. You know, they just don't make them like this anymore. And by they, I mean Charlie Band. He just, just doesn't make them like he used to, sad to say. As with Beanstalk and the rest of Moonbeam's romps, Charlie Band produced them all. And even produced episodes for them um, included in his ever-popular Video Zone series. Although, I couldn't track down the one for Beanstalk. Can you track that down? Let me know in the comments. The film would be the debut of director Michael Davis, who has had a strange career indeed. Starting as a storyboard artist on films like Encino Man and Secret of the Ooze, and in the monster flicks The Cellar and Tremors. After getting his big break directing Beanstalk in 1994, he would write that awesome Double Dragon movie and even do a run of the late 90s, early 2000s teen sex romps wholly inspired by the success of American Pie. You know, I've been thinking of covering these flicks too. Subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments. And aside from movies about kids fighting giants or teens doing it, he went on to do the underrated Monster Man and the underwhelming Shoot 'em Up. But, you know, his time at Moonbeam Entertainment would prove to be paramount, no pun intended, as he also wrote many entries for the company. The film is really held together by the performance of Stuart Pinkin, who was in a lot of these family flicks back when, and is one hell of a character actor in his own right. Do you believe in little people, Daddy? I sure do. But the government, obviously covering up their existence. Darn that President Nixon! I wish we'd elected that Kennedy guy. He may not be as handsome as Nixon, but he's a whole lot smarter. 
Here he plays the paranoid and borderline conspiracy theorist giant whose family thinks is just going insane. It's hilarious. <laughs> Hello? Don't you think you're too old to believe in little people? <laughs> and there's a real charm to his take on the character. As said before, there is indeed franchise potential here. And while Moonbeam did produce sequels to some of their films, this one never got the treatment. It would have been so awesome to have Margot Kidder's character return to hunt down some more fairy tale esque creatures and whatnot, but, you know, then again, this one definitely stands out among the rest as well, being the more darker themed one of the whole bunch, and even hinting at some adult humor. You know, and it's a shame that lead actor J.D. Daniels never really led a film again. He was a well enough known dude uh, who had at that point done some big name films, and for being a child actor, he was pretty dang good. You know, he would go on to act in films and bit parts and would eventually retire. Which again, is a shame, as Moonbeam's films seem to try to uh, attach child stars to their properties, and JD was a great giant killer. As for Patrick Renna, well, he is currently avoiding my messages and running a pretty cool podcast of his own, never really touching on the films I want him to touch on, of course. Beanstalk is indeed an underrated film. And, you know, I'm not sure if it's gained cult status or not, as literally nobody I ask about this film knows what the hell I'm talking about. It was never even released properly on DVD. As I suppose one would have to spend an unhealthy amount of time in video stores in the 90s to understand Moonbeam's greatness, and, you know, I don't blame him for that. Maybe one day those films will catch on. They're streaming for the most part and pretty easy to find, and, you know, they're a strange watch today with adult eyes and they'll really make you miss the days of practical fantasy effects, sets, and locations. Moonbeam Entertainment's films are truly a forgotten entry in science fiction and fantasy adventure for kids that deserve another look. But hey, that's what Staunch TV is here for. Be sure to subscribe, share, and hit that notification bell and all that crap, and stay tuned folks, a lot of cool stuff coming from your strange friends only on Staunch TV.